In this example, we're going to take a look at this radical function, f of x, and we're going to determine its domain. So when we look at this uh, function definition, we have a couple of different radical expressions. So it's the square root of 8 minus x and the square root of x minus 2. So we know that when we deal with square roots and domain specifically, we just need to have these radicands or, you know, the expressions under the radical. They need to be greater than or equal to zero because we cannot have a negative value under a square root because then it's no longer a real number. So we're going to take each one of these separately. So 8 minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero and x minus 2 also has to be greater than or equal to zero. And so we'll just solve each one of these inequalities independently. We'll start by subtracting 8 from both sides. And then we can go ahead and divide each side by negative 1 to get that x by itself. And of course, remember, when we're multiplying or dividing by a negative, we have to flip the sign of the inequality. So we have x is less than or equal to 8. And for this critter over here, we'll add 2 and x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at both of these on the same number line. We have 2 down here and 8 right up here. And so we know it's going to be a closed circle at 2 for this one and moving to the right since it's greater than 2. And we also have a closed circle at 8 because it equals 8 and we're moving this way. So we need to concern ourselves with this overlap right here. Okay, so it looks like it's just going to be everything from 2 to 8, and indeed it does include the endpoints as well. So for this function, this f of x, we can say the domain is going to be, and we'll write it in interval notation, so bracket 2, comma 8, and close that bracket. And again, this just means we're going all real numbers from 2 to 8, and the brackets indicate that we are including those endpoints 2 and 8. Well, before we look at the graph, let's go ahead and just make sure numerically that uh, this makes sense. So we'll try a couple of numbers here. We'll try 0, which is to the left. We'll try 10, which is to the right. And then we'll try 5 right in the middle. And we'll just see if these work out. So let's try 0 first. So 8 minus 0. So that's the square root of 8. That's okay. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Yeah, I can't have the square root of a negative. So 0 does not work, which we excluded it. So good. And we'll try 10 out here. So 8 minus 10, so that's negative 2. And once again, can't have the square root of a negative. So the 10 also does not work. Once again, that's why we excluded it. And so we'll try a number in between. So let's try 5. So 8 minus 5 is 3, the square root of 3. And then 5 minus 2 is going to be 3 as well. So the 5 in the middle there does work. So we can see the domain here for this function is going to be from 2 to 8, and it's including both of those endpoint values. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at this function.